All right, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Uh, please ignore, I guess try to ignore the mess that's going on here. This A1 program has become just a just a big the biggest pain in the ass. Um, but we're not talking about this just yet because we're kind of at the point with this repair. I don't know if you could tell, but basically I have the entire bottom disassembled. I might make a follow-up video when I'm putting this all back together, but right now this is just not really worth discussing. Um, just move all of this stuff out of the way. I want to talk about something else though, really briefly, and then th there will be a follow-up video about this in the future. I'm a fool, okay? <laughs> I'm a fool. Like, anyone that knows me knows this, but like, I just, you know, sometimes, you know, pe people make mistakes, people goof up. And a couple weeks ago, I came to you, my audience, who I, I do care about deeply, and I, I do try my best to guide you in the way that I feel is most accurate and most enlightening and most helpful on your film photography journey, whatever that might be. And I said that this Contax S2 is like the best camera that I've ever used. And at the time, like I full heartedly believed that. Yeah, sure, there was some annoyances with the light meter, but it's one of those things where it does work. It just kind of causes me to take a little bit more time to take a photo, which I kind of enjoyed. Uh, and then there was a couple comments regarding the accuracy of the higher shutter speeds. And I didn't reply to those because I had tested them and they weren't working like 100% consistently but I was able to get to one four thousandth of a second um, semi-regularly. And then it started acting up a little bit, but I didn't think anything of it. Um, I'd shot in four or five rolls through it, had no issues with any of the photos that came back. It, it all worked fine. And then I'm gearing up for this trip to, I went on a little vacation. It was very, very nice um, up until certain parts, but that'll be a longer video for another time. So get to the airport and I take a, picture of my girlfriend because we're just getting dinner before the the flight leaves so i take a picture of her and it sounded very slow now i've talked about this before but like i've tested thousands and thousands tens of thousands of cameras up to this point like i've i've taken more test shots with cameras than i can even begin to calculate basically what would happen is i would like each day for the course of like two years, I would test like a couple hundred cameras and would like run through all the shutter speeds, run through the light meters. Like I, I'm not good at a lot of things, but I am good about telling the shutter speed, like not, not accurately, like not like, oh, that's going to be 125 or like one 125th of a second. But like, I can tell the difference between like 160th and 130th or something like that. Like noticeable differences, especially with mechanical shutters, because there is a very significant sound difference there. So I took the shot and I think it was at one, one, one twenty-fifth of a second. And I was like, gosh, that sounds really kind of slow. So I didn't really think anything of it. We get on the plane and it was a red eye flight and I, we land in Tampa and I'm just a shell of my former self because I didn't sleep on the flight because I just, I'm a larger person. So like, just, I'm a big guy, like I'm tall, you know, it's hard for me to fit in an airplane seat. So anyway, I never really sleep on planes. And then we go through this whole like rental car fiasco. It takes like two hours to get that sorted out. And then we go to get uh, breakfast and we're sitting there and I'm like just chugging coffee. Like it's going out of style. And then I see like the way that the light is hitting this like apartment building across the way. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And I had uh, HP5 loaded at the time. I was like, this would be perfect because just the, the light and the shadow that's hitting it would be really nice. So I frame up to take a picture and I hear the dink. And then it doesn't return. The mirror does not return. The shutter stays open. So I think, hmm, <laughs> awesome. So I, I take the lens off and I look and sure enough, it's, it's, it's just locked open and it's just, uh, it basically is just looking like, looking like that. All right, cool. So I kind of mess around with a little bit, rotate through all the different speeds and just kind of see what the deal is. And it's just, it's just not working. So I'm like, all right, cool. Awesome. I have no tools with me. I have... I have no brain power to really handle this. So I like start whacking on it a little bit because that's usually like, sometimes it just needs a little bit of love tap, a little jump start. So I like kind of do a little hit 
it's not doing it. I cycle through all the speeds, fire at different speeds, and nothing is really working. So, all right, cool, awesome. I brought this one, this was the only camera that I brought, the only film camera that I brought, and it's, it's not working. Awesome. So, uh, with that in mind, I put it back in my bag and tried not to think about it. We get back to where we're staying and proceed to take a nap because, again, I had not slept. And I wake up a couple hours later and go on Craigslist, uh, the Tampa Craigslist, which is just, it's a place to be, and start looking for film cameras because I'm like, I'm not... I'm not dead set on having a film camera for this trip, but like it was kind of a big vacation. Like there was a lot going on and you know, I, I want to capture these memories and I have all this film. So like, I want to be able to shoot this film and my camera's not working, whatever. And I had like one little tool. I tried taking the bottom off and tried messing with the timing gear, but like I just, I, whatever I had, it wasn't going to work for the situation. So then I find this. And lo and behold, but I am saved by Minolta. <laughs> Got a Minolta SRT 202 with a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens and with a 35 millimeter lens that the guy just included. All of this for like 30 bucks. And the only thing the guy said was the slower speeds aren't working, which is like 15, one fifteenth of a second, he said was kind of working, but one eighth down to one second wasn't working. And that's pretty common because the speed escapement uh, which sits like about right here in these Minoltas, it, it gets gummed up all the time. So it is either a little bit gummed up, needs to be cleaned out and relubed, or it is broken, just needs to be replaced. But that's really not that huge of a deal. But the point being though, this is a fantastic camera. And it's one that like, one of my favorite Minolta cameras, to be quite frank, like the SRT202 is just everything you kind of want in a Minolta camera. It's bulky. It's sturdy, reliable. It has the aperture preview. It has a decent light meter. It has like the fun little calculation on the back for what you should be shooting. It has a film indicator, which I kind of love to be honest. And it just, it feels really good to you. So really it was the best case scenario. Got a camera that will work and it worked for the trip. And yeah, I'm going to make another video about this. I'm gonna make another video about the trip, but I just think like, Initially, I just want to clarify something where I spent <laughs> like 10 times what I spent on this to just get this camera, just the camera, not the lens. Um, and it failed, like just it failed uh, immediately uh, upon arriving upon destination. Now, it seems to be working just fine, which is really annoying. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> Don't know what the hell's going on there. But, um, yeah, I, like, I don't know what to say. Like, that doesn't work. This did work. So, I guess by process of elimination, quite literally, this is a better camera. And I was wrong. I was wrong to assume that the, the contacts is, is the best camera. I don't think that this is the best camera. It's one of my favorites. It's one that I've kind of wanted to have for a while, but, I don't know, just, it never really lined up. But finding this, like, it, it just, it all worked out. And then... Literally did that after we woke up from the nap, drove for like half an hour, picked this camera up, and the rest is pretty much history. I'll have like another trip video going over the parts of the trip, showing the photos that I took and all this stuff when I get them developed, and make another little deal about that. But really, this was a great camera for the experience, and it, it saved the trip, quite frankly. And... I'm pretty stoked about that. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this just yet. Like I, I still like the camera a lot, but if I can't rely on it, then uh, then what's the point of having it, you know? So I'm, I might look into my options there. I might have just wasted my time, my money, and your time and attention by telling you that this is the best thing ever. So I guess uh, man enough to admit that I'm wrong here. And... I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Just don't come to me for consumer advice or do, I guess. I, I think that I, I actually, you know what? Do come to me for consumer advice because even when I am wrong, I will do my best to try to tell you. Or when I have a bias, at least I'll try to be upfront about that. In the meantime, like I said, I got all this work to do and I'm going to try to record more repair videos because I have 
so much stuff to work on. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out and definitely check back in a couple weeks for the full trip video. It should be a lot of fun. I brought out some new cameras that I was messing with and I think overall the quality would be really cool and just the story in general is pretty uh, tumultuous to say the least. But kind of disappointed with this. Actually, no, incredibly disappointed with this, to be completely honest. And really, really stoked with the Minolta SRT202, which I will be making another video about this soon because I, I really do enjoy this camera. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it as always. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the content I've got lined up. Uh, comment below any questions you have. What do you think is the best camera? I'm genuinely curious to know your opinion on that because I'd like to make like a little series going over that. And yeah, I think they'll do it. Thank you so much for watching again and uh, catch you on the next one.